These videos have been possible with the help of those that support me on Patreon. So thank you guys for your constant support, and if you want to support me, you can click on the link on your screen right now, or click the link in the description below. Thanks a lot. Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Valle, and you know I'm a bit of a history buff if you've been watching my channel, so today I'd like to have a little bit of a history powwow with you. So if you got the time, go grab yourself a drink, turn your chair around, and let's rock talk. Last week, an art exhibit in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston was cancelled due to the fact that it was being called racist. The exhibit in question was about the kimono, wherein you're actually able to dress up in one. From what I gathered on social media, the event was deemed racist because the backdrop to the exhibit was the painting Les Japonais, a piece by late French painter Claude Monet of his wife Camilla. This painting is nearly 150 years old and is one of Monet's most popular pieces. So if you aren't really up to date with the most important internet issues out there, you may not understand why people are upset, which is what about half of this video is going to be discussing, because there's a lot of definitions you need to fully understand. This entire situation can be summed up in two words, cultural appropriation. So what is cultural appropriation? Well, according to Marianne Webster, the definition of appropriation is to take or use something especially in a way that is illegal, unfair, etc. So from this, we can gather that cultural appropriation would be to take or adopt slash use a part of a culture in a way that is illegal, unfair, etc. Now, we must ask ourselves, how does one illegally adopt a part of a culture? Well, common sense would dictate that that simply does not happen. However, there was another word used in that definition. Do you remember it? Unfair. One of the most subjective words of all time and can be thrown around at just about anything. So if we were to say that cultural appropriation's definition would be to take or adopt slash use a part of a culture in a way that is unfair, well, that makes more sense. But by doing so, that kind of opens up the floodgate, doesn't it? But don't worry, there is a filter that we'll discuss later on how to actually filter out all the nonsense and get to the real core and the meat of the issue. But before we can get to that, let's get to the heart of the matter at hand, shall we? The cultural appropriation of the kimono. To understand the cultural appropriation of the kimono, we need to understand the history of the kimono. The history of the kimono goes all the way back to roughly 206 BC in China. You see, the kimono has another name, the gofuku, which translates out to the clothes of Wu. Why? Well, it's because early kimonos were actually influenced heavily by the Hanfu or the Kanfuku in Japan. These were the clothes of the Han Dynasty. These clothing choices were first adopted by mostly Japanese embassies within China. This would eventually open the floodgates to allowing the Japanese to appropriate, I mean, adopt large chunks of China's culture, starting sometime around the 5th century. However, it wasn't until the 8th century before Chinese-styled clothing became very mainstream in Japan. At some point during the Heian Jedi, or Heian period in Japan, the kimono became more stylized, though the wearers still wore the mo, or half apron. It was during the Muromachi period that the traditional kimono was replaced by the kusare, a simpler kimono once thought of as, you know, underwear, like what you wore underneath it, that lacked the hakama, which by the way are extremely comfortable pants and which now would require the obi, or belt, to hold it closed. This style would stick around until the Edo period where the kimono would undergo its final change. The sleeves would become longer, specifically for unmarried women, and the obi became wider. Additionally, many different ways to tie the obi became very fashionable. It was during the reign of imperial badass Emperor Meiji that he announced an edict to his country that their only way for survival was to westernize and fast. This would lead to the kimono being replaced entirely by the yukata, a looser, breezier, and far more comfortable alternative. And the appropriation, I mean, damn it, the adoption of Western-styled clothing. I, I really don't know why I keep making that mistake. Where, wait, was I? Where was, oh, okay, I remember now. Japan had begun to heavily adopt Western styles of clothing in the early 20th century, and relegated the yukata for special occasions such as weddings or festivals. This tradition is carried on even till today. So, you're probably thinking to yourself right now, Tyler, what does this have to do with a closed art exhibit? Well, mainly the beginning and the end. The parts about where the kimono was adopted from Chinese culture and about how late Japanese Emperor Meiji forced this country to adopt Western styles from clothing to government. However, there is a reason why I use the term adopt instead of appropriate, because appropriation is reserved for imperialist. But Tyler, you're probably thinking, didn't Japan colonize several parts of Asia during the Meiji, Taishi, and Showa periods, including completely annexing Korea? Well, uh, uh yes. But, but you, you see, it's only for white imperialists. Well, that doesn't make any sense. In fact, that sounds kind of racist. Whoa, whoa. Hold on there. Don't just say words without really knowing the definition first. Let's just go back to Marianne Webster and see what they have to say about racism, shall we? There's two full definitions of racism here. 
A belief that the human race is a primary determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. The other one, which is shorter and more to the point, racial prejudice or discrimination. So you see, you can't be racist towards white people, therefore... Wait, what? You, you don't understand? Oh, silly me. That's the real definition of racism, not the social justice definition of racism. See, the social justice definition of racism is more like a math problem. So get out your calculators, because we're going to go over this. The social justice definition of racism is power plus prejudice divided by your number of privileges squared. Are you, are you confused? That's normal. So let me break it down for you in layman's terms. You can't be racist towards white people because white people hold all the power, especially in China, North Korea, India, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Algeria, Burundi, Guinea, Ethiopia, Gabon, Liberia, the Philippines. And because only white people run the world, such as the ninth president of Vietnam, Chiang Tung Sung, your prejudice may or may not have power. So prejudice without power is justified to fight against the system that has imprisoned you in the prison cell that is modern day Western society where all you have is the ability to cry about the social injustices you face from your iPhone or laptop while you sip on your shitty, overpriced coffee from Starbucks. You poor things, don't you understand? In all honesty, I made this video because this matters to me greatly. Cultures throughout history have borrowed from each other. It's how they've survived and they've grown, it's how we've grown it as a species. If cultures didn't share with one another, it would have retarded the growth of the entire nation artistically, scientifically, and economically. Think, what would happen if we didn't share cultures with the rest of the world and the world didn't share with us? If Western culture was relegated to where they sat, held under the thumb of the Catholic regime, or Saudi Arabia and Egypt, Iran, the havens of scientific and mathematic experiences weren't able to share that knowledge with us? How many years later would it be before we even came up with a concept of zero? A thing that seems so mundane now was a drastic and massive leap in science and was able to be shared. If Sir Isaac Newton didn't share the, the laws of thermodynamics, if Galileo Galilei didn't go out and state that he doesn't believe the, the Earth is the center of the universe, and in fact we circle the sun, if all these things were compacted down into their cultures, and not be able to be spread over fear of them being appropriated. How bad would every society be? Modern day Western society is built off the foundations of a Republican democracy founded by philosophers and philosophers from ancient Rome and ancient Greece and people who built upon those ideas in Europe, Britain, Germany, France, Italy, all these nations far apart vastly different ways of living their lives and different points of view coming together to create something magnificent democracy because they were able to share with one another their cultures a good example of a country they shut its borders out from the rest of the world in an attempt to maintain its sovereignty and its independence and its own culture was china during the ming dynasty when in the 13th century they outlawed all maritime shipping which would play a major part in the entire collapse of the Ming Dynasty. When their doors opened during the Qing Dynasty, and they attempted to build a trade relationship with the Americas, their population doubled in a rapid amount of time. They went from 150 million to 300 million due to the fact that they were able to get medical supplies, food, and different types of silk and cloth from the rest of the world that they weren't able to get on their home soil. This was a massive thing. Cutting off a culture as a means to preserve it is the fast track to ensuring that it is lost to the annals of history for all time. The counter argument that was made to me by someone was to ask me why it bothers me that we won't be looking at the kimono through the eyes of a white person. This question was so bafflingly stupid that I actually considered just throwing my computer away and just becoming a caveman. I will never bring up race or ethnicity into an argument where it is not needed. I instead use historical facts to make my point. No one, not the Chinese, the Japanese, or anyone else cared that the kimono was originally adopted from the Han Fu. Nor do they care that Japan adopted Western clothing. The only time it has become an issue is when white Westerners are involved. These are the same college-age students who will tell you that wearing a yukata or kimono at all as a foreigner, no matter if you live in Japan or you're visiting Japan, is offensive and appropriation and you shouldn't do it. This is complete nonsense, but it will be spread as fact anyway. 
Social justice folks have done a really good job at fighting to maintain the white Western culture and keep it pure from any outside influences. And honestly, I think they would make the Nazis proud. Anyway, this video is just about over, so once again, my name is Tyler Valle, and thank you guys so much for sitting through this entire thing. And all I have left to say is, Saijin, sayonara, goodbye, until we meet again.